Right, welcome to episode three of the Eric P Show. I think it's going quite well so far, uh, my non-biased opinion. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy today's show. Uh, sorry for the background again. I know a lot of people have been complaining it's a bit bland. I am going to buy some blue tack, uh, stick a few things up, a bit of fan mail, that sort of thing. Uh, eventually, you know, when I get more subscribers, I'll get a green screen and then you can see me, I don't know. On a Millennium Falcon or sitting on the deck of the Enterprise or something interesting like that. Uh, but for now, you'll just have to put up with a bluey grey type background. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Uh, right, well, I'm going to open today's show with the uh, Eric's letters, uh, as usual. Uh, just like helping a few people out there. And remember, uh, it's Uncle Eric if you ever want to send anything in and uh, get a bit of advice yourself. Because uh, I know that a lot of people will be looking at me thinking, oh, he's good at doing that. So, yeah. So if you keep an eye out, you can send your own letters in. Uh, right, on to the next part of the show then. Eric's letters. Cracking. Right. Hope you enjoy it. Yep. Yeah, welcome to Eric's Letters again. Uh, I've got a letter here from Jerry. Uh, well, I'll call him Jerry. Uh, so that's his name for today. Uh, Dear Eric, I need your help. Uh, I've done something really bad this week and I think I'm going to be in a bit of trouble. Uh, well, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, you just come to me. I'll help you out. Uh, yeah, uh, my father's just had heart surgery. Uh, so the doctor advised him to get away and relax for a bit. So he's gone away with my mum for like a second honeymoon uh, and they've left me in charge uh, well that sounds okay so far uh, yeah uh, my car's a bit of a banger uh, so I decided to use my dad's car uh, he's just bought an E-Type Jag it's a classic one uh, he got it from auction cost him round about £4.3 million oh that's a bit pricey right, let's have a look uh, yeah so I decided to go to the seaside so I went with my girlfriend and I parked the car on the beach uh, and then I went drinking, uh, and I come back like four hours later. Uh, yeah, that sounds okay. Uh, anyway, to cut a long story short, the tide had come in. Uh, so there was just water, uh, and I couldn't see no car no more. Oh, that sounds a little bit bad. Uh, right. Uh, I decided to spend the night in a hotel and come back in the morning and see what had happened to the car. Uh, so I got up in the morning, went down to the beach... Uh, and there was nothing but a wheel, uh, a few wires, and a wing mirror. Uh, the rest of the car had been washed out to sea. Uh, yeah, your dad's going to be a bit a bit miffed about that, I think. Uh, definitely. Uh, yeah, so the worst thing is, uh, I lost my licence last year, and I'm not insured to drive it. Uh, so my dad won't get his insurance money either. Right, I can imagine your father really getting annoyed about this. Definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, so anyway, uh, because I was really nervous about this, uh, my mum phoned and I told her everything's fine and there's no problems. Uh, and then I decided to have a party. Uh, so two days later, I invited everybody round and I had a big party at the house. Uh, we had alcohol, loud music, you know, the usual stuff for a party. Anyway, my mate Ed Bangaradis uh, did like his party piece uh, and the curtains caught fire. Uh, and the house started burning, and everyone rushed out the building. Uh, so uh, I ran back in, uh, and I saved Gerald. Uh, Gerald, my hamster. Uh, that's very brave of you. Uh, I think that'll get you a few brownie points for your parents. I'm very proud of you. Uh, yeah, so the house burnt to the ground. It had all my mum and dad's possessions in. Uh, there's just like a big ash, a pile of ash there now, really, and a few bricks. Uh, I'm staying in a travel lodge. Uh, they give me a credit card while they were away. Uh, I've run up a bill of about two and a half thousand quid. Uh, I've just been drinking in the bar and buying a bit of food for Gerald. All oh, right. Uh, I think your mum and dad are going to be a little bit miffed about all this. Uh, so, yeah, be prepared. Uh, what shall I do, Eric? Shall I wait till I get back at the airport and tell them, or shall I tell them over the phone? Uh, if, if I was you, I'd tell them over the phone. Uh, say, look, the house is burnt to the ground. Uh, my dad's car's been written off. Uh, these things happen. It was an accident. Uh, sorry, uh, I didn't mean to do it. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't meet him at the airport. Uh, I'd give that a bit of a miss. Uh, your dad probably loves you very much. Uh, and as proud as they are, or they will be, uh, for your saving, Gerald, 
Uh, I think there's a good chance that your dad could end up killing you with a blunt instrument. Uh, so just stay out of his way for like two weeks uh, and then take it from there. Uh, yeah, because I really think he probably will kill you. Uh, so you don't want to be anywhere near him because uh, that's going to be a bit dangerous. Uh, right, I hope this helped. Uh, good luck, Jerry. Uh, I think you're going to need it. Uh, right, on to the next letter. Bye. Ah, right, this is a letter from Brenda. Uh, well, we're calling her Brenda, uh, so I'll read it out. Uh, Dear Eric, I am worried that my husband is a pervert. Uh, right, well, there's quite a few people that fit in that category. Uh, I'll just carry on reading. Uh, I came home the other week and my husband was dressed like Tina Turner. He was singing Private Dancer and he was stood in front of a like webcam talking to some fat bloke, uh, which I thought was a bit strange. Uh, but this is just like the tip of the iceberg. Uh, he's been a bit funny now for a few months. Uh, the other month, uh, he went into the bathroom and he heard squeaking, squidgy sort of noises coming out the bathroom. Uh, and when he came out, he had a blow up sheep. Uh, when, I, when I confronted him about it, uh, he just said it was for a party and it was a joke, uh, but there was some strange noises coming out of that bathroom. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, right. Well, uh, that's a bit strange, but yeah, you know, some odd people. Uh, right, what else? Uh, the other thing was, uh, I was checking his computer and I, and I was looking and seeing what was on his computer and I found a load of Ewok porn. Ewok porn? Uh, I've, I've never even heard of Ewok porn, but yeah, okay. Uh, so that was bad enough in itself. Uh, then he came back with some like uniforms because uh, he said he wanted to like you know have a bit of role play during sex. Uh, and I'm a bit prudish, so I didn't really fancy it. But I thought you know well you know anything to save me marriage. Uh, so I did that. Uh, anyway, he gave me a uniform, and it was like it was an hedgehog. He wanted me to dress like an hedgehog. Only there was like weird leather gear with it. I thought, I'm not into this. This is a bit much for me, this. Uh, yeah, your husband definitely sounds like he's got a bit of a problem. Uh, I think he needs to go and speak to somebody. Uh, so that's not really normal behaviour. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I really can't stay with my husband if he's going to carry on like this. I mean, between his Ewok porn and his sheep fetish and getting me to dress like an hedgehog, uh, it's just getting worse. I just don't know what to do. Uh, I, I found a bill as well the other week uh, for like a sex hotline. Uh, he'd been running up massive bills with a with someone called Mrs Whiplash. Uh, so yeah, uh, right. Well, uh, I don't know what to advise here really. Uh, uh, I think the best thing to do uh, just confront him with it and say, look, if you don't change your weird ways, uh, you know, we're gonna have to separate. You know, because we're not into the same sort of things. Uh, in fact, I think you're a colossus pervert and I really don't want to be with you anymore. Uh, so, yeah, I think the best thing to do is uh, you should separate. Uh, you either separate or you get, you know, or you're going to have to get used to dressing like an hedgehog, uh, except the fact he's going to have pictures of sheep everywhere, uh, and except the fact that he's going to try you getting you into Ewok porn. Uh, so. I think the reason he got the hedgehog costume is because he can't get an Ewok one. Because uh, hedgehogs do look a little bit like Ewoks, uh, so that's probably uh, the answer to that one. Uh, right, well, okay, I, I hope everything works out okay, uh, but yeah, if I was you, I think I'd leave him. Uh, right, uh, so, right, that's it for this week. I uh, hope everybody's uh, had all the problems solved. Uh, so, yeah, see you next time. Bye. Yep, think of another cracking job, another load of people helped. Uh, so, yeah. I think I do a great job with that if I do say so myself. Uh, right, well, the next part of the show, as you know from the usual format, uh, is me uh, Darwin Awards, or me Eric's pick, as it, as it is now. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but if you imagine a yo-yo going up and down, uh, that'll give you an idea uh, a little bit about the next uh, award. Uh, right, so I hope you enjoy this one. Uh, so, right, on with the show. Yeah. Right, welcome to the Darwin Awards again. Uh, I have to be fair, uh, today's one, uh, he didn't win the Darwin Award. Uh, he came as a runner-up. Uh, so he's not really a winner, uh, but I don't suppose any of these people really are. Uh, right, uh, well, this one, he's called Eric, uh, which isn't great, uh, you know. 
Uh, don't really want to be associated with an Eric like this, but his name's Eric. Uh, I won't give his second name, because uh, it's probably uh, not very nice to give the full name. Uh, but he's called Eric. Uh, he was a fast food worker in Virginia, uh, and he decided to jump off, uh, jump off a railway trestle uh, to do a bit of bungee jumping. Uh, so what he did was he tied like five or six bungee cords together uh, and he tied it around his ankle. Now, to be fair to him, he did make sure it was secure around his ankle and it did stay on. Uh, so you can't really moan at him for that. Uh, the thing was, it was a 70 foot drop uh, and he measured it out and he worked out the bungee, you know, the length of the bungee ropes. Uh, but he didn't take into account that the bungee ropes stretch. Uh, so... He measured out like 68 feet of bungee cord uh, and the stretch on it probably take it close to about 110 feet uh, so obviously that's not going to work out very well in a bungee jump uh, so he jumped off uh, and it wasn't over water either it was over like a pavement uh, so you can imagine what happened uh, he just ended up very flat uh, and that was that really so yeah so that was runner up 1997 uh, so sorry Eric uh, sorry you had to do that. Uh, he's probably up at the pearly gates now. Uh, so if they didn't let him in, I suppose he could always slide underneath. Uh, that, that's that again. That's probably in poor taste. Uh, right. So that's today's winner, uh, Eric, nineteen ninety seven Darwin Award. Well, Darwin Award runner up. Uh, he probably robbed. You know, I don't know who got first place, but it must have been a cracker. Uh, I'll probably come across it at some point. Right, so uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, I hope you, uh, you agree with me on today's pick. Right, we'll just carry on with the rest of the show then. Yep. Right, hello. Welcome to Eric's Bits again. Uh, this little bit is uh, based on bucket lists, you know, things people want to do before they die. Uh, there was one guy in Kidderminster... Uh, he's aged 85, Daryl Meekham, he was called. Uh, he decided to moon at a speed camera. Uh, uh, and when I say moon, uh, some people might not know what I mean by that. Uh, it basically means flashing your spotty bottom at the uh, police cameras. Not that I know his bottom is spotty. Uh, I've not seen the video, uh, but uh, that's just my way of explaining it in the cleanest way possible. Uh, so that's what he did. Uh, he was terminally ill, and he decided to flash his bottom at the speed camera. Uh, so that's Daryl Meekham, age 55, uh, from Kidderminster uh, in the UK. Uh, so that's what he did. Uh, I had a friend once, uh, on his bucket list, at uh, number one, he had uh, swimming with uh, alligators in the, in the Everglades. Uh, we never did find out what was number two on his list. Uh, that's as far as he got, really. Uh, so I would advise anybody, if you have got anything on your bucket list, uh, I'd leave the most dangerous stuff to number 10, or at least as close as possible, because you might not be able to complete all your tasks otherwise. Uh, you might slip off this mortal coil before you reach number 10. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, for me, I want to get on top of like a tiger moth, you know, those old World War I bar planes. I'd like to stand on the wing on the top and do a loop the loop. Uh, I plan on doing that before I uh, pop my clogs. Uh, so that's my one. Uh, if you've got any ideas, anything you'd like to do before you die, uh, just put them in the comments below, you know. So anything you fancy trying, just put in the comments. Uh, and that's about it for today, really. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching the show as usual. Uh, I hope you're all getting addicted to it now. Uh, I like doing them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thanks for joining me and see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Yep. Ah, right, well, that's about it for today. Okay, right. See you in the next episode. Yeah.